Here, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all of you. I'm Dominic Bladner, the IDDF High Performance Manager, and I'm very delighted to warmly welcome all of you to our 43 ITDF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Nutritional Supplements. We are looking forward to hear what our guest will lecture today about the nutritional supplements. But before going over to the introduction of our guest, I want to talk briefly about our webinar code of the Q&A. To all the attendees, please leave your questions in the Q&A section. Our guest will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer part of the webinar. Thank you very much for taking care of this. And now over to the introduction of our guest for today. It's a great pleasure for us to warmly welcome for the second time in our uh, uh, ITDF HPD series, webinar series, Associate Professor Dr. Petra Saletel from Slovenia. Uh, she was educated at the Faculty of Sport in Ljubljana in Slovenia. She did there the diploma, the master's and the PhD. Uh, she is an associate professor in the Department of Dance and Aerobic and Fitness. Uh, her research work focuses on preparation, sports performance, sports nutrition and sports injuries. She was a former acrobatic rock and roll dancer over 10 years, two times national champion, and she took the 11th place at the European Championships. And she did a work in wellness studios on programs of physical preparation and nutrition consulting. Hello, welcome, Petra, and thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Hello, hello. Warmly, warmly welcome from me too. So, um, dietary supplements, it's a very popular theme, and I hope you will enjoy our presentation. Okay. Thank you, Petra, and for sure we will do, but first I would like to, uh, last but not least, warmly welcome our experienced ITDF High Performance Elite Coach, Massimo Castantini. So, pass over to you, Max. Thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, welcome all to this uh, webinar uh, they conducted for the second time by Petra. And welcome back, uh, Petra, to our uh, webinar. And uh, um, I hope, and actually, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I, I don't hope. I'm sure that today's topic uh, is really interesting. And uh, there are so many things uh, um, very, very uh, functional for the table tennis, as we said many times, uh, how the uh, nutritional part uh, should be really taken in a serious consideration when you want to uh, perform uh, uh, not well, when you want to perform better. So there are so many things to know today and uh, happy to have again uh, Petra with us. So without further ado, I will pass uh, and leave the microphone and the screen and the, and the keyboards to Petra for her presentation. Enjoy the presentation to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I will share my screen with you and we'll start. Presentation. Just a minute. So uh, at first uh, webinar, we, we were talking about general consideration of sport nutrition and ergogenic aids and nutrition supplements are uh, part of, can be part of general nutrition. Uh, of course, they are very popular in achieving uh, the highest sport result. And but the baseline for all, uh, also for using uh, nutritional supplements, is of course good health and strong uh, performance and adequate nutrition, which is essential to all the fitness and performance. So when uh, adequate nutrition is uh, enough, then in highest levels of sport we can take some. Uh, nutritional supplements because in on high level sport there are few differences between uh, training programs and genetics everything is very high so uh, differences between high level athletes are very small 
So some of them are using then um, uh, nutritional supplements uh, to get even more uh, success. So uh, reaching maximum physical performance uh, to enhance your strength, power or endurance, or maybe uh, they take some stimulants uh, for better performance or, or whatever. So our goal is uh, to win and uh, nutrition can be a very big part of that win. Uh, ergogenic aids uh, means uh, they increase potential to do work. Uh, so they are used to improve physical work capacity, physiological function, and athlete's performance. They can be not just nutritional, they can also be mechanical. For example, if we wear uh, lightweight racing shoes for runners or they can be, uh, these aids can be also psychological, uh, for example, some mental conditioning uh, through hypnosis, which will minimize distraction on competition. So we all use that and also physiological uh, to increase physical power. For example, uh, blood transfusion or bicarbonate loading. Uh, so it's not always, um, ergogenic aids are not always pharmacological ergogenic aids. Uh, but when we talk about uh, sport foods or, or uh, nutritional supplement, we um, many times we think about pharmacological and nutritional ergogenic aids. So they are concerned um, with the use of nutrients or chemical compounds or drugs and believed to be effective in enhancing physiological or psychological functions. These uh, effects are not always. Uh, it is very important that are not always uh, proved by researchers. So many studies were conducted which are not always uh, proving the the effects of the uh, nutritional supplements that we will talk about. So mostly they are used in uh, weight loss or muscle gain or increasing energy expenditure through physical activity or for regeneration. So, uh, of course, using supplements is an attractive option for athletes, like some magic formula for winning. And some research uh, is showing that more than 50% of athletes have already used some form of pharmacological uh, supplements. And some other research is showing that uh, sports students are using uh, nutritional supplement in uh, more than 80%. So a lot of them, uh, this market is also large. Uh, and I, I will say here, uh, if there are any pictures from some uh, pharmacolo pharmacological firm, doesn't matter because it, it isn't uh, advertisement. I just took picture which will show a kind of box you can have for some of um, uh, supplement. Okay. So uh, on the other hand, there is also uh, uh, there are also supplements who which aren't allowed or methods which aren't allowed. World Anti Doping Agency is listing them every year or each two years on the list. So this here just shows us that we have uh, also in sport, there is um, probably often use of drugs. So we have different doping classes, for example, stimulants, narcotics, anabolic agents, diuretics, peptide and glycoprotein hormones. And then we have doping methods. You probably all heard about blood doping and other uh, pharmacological and chemi chemical manipulation. And we have classes of drugs which are not all uh, prohibited. There are certain restrictions. Each year they are also changing. So we have to take a look at the list of uh, uh, International Olympic Committee and we get the there are some uh, restrictions in alcohol, marijuana, local anesthetics, corticosteroids, for example, for asthma um, patients and beta blockers and so on. So this is these are substances which are prohibited and we want to talk about them today. 
so we will talk about sports supplements, uh, nutritional and pharmacological ergogenic aids is also the name for sport supplements. So market is very wide. There are more than 500 supplements on the market and their roles uh, is different. First, they can act as a stimulant, then they can increase storage or availability of limiting substrate. Uh, they can act also as a supplemental fuel source. Uh, they can reduce uh, performance inhibiting metabolic byproducts, for example, lactic acid. Uh, they can also facilitate recovery. So in recovery, there is a lot of products which are used. And they can also enhance tissue synthesis, uh, mostly protein synthesis to gain muscle weight. Uh, and of course, uh, they can also uh, decrease fat. So increase fat metabolism, so decrease fat stores in our body. These are some supplements which we all know and they are mostly used in sports, not only uh, high level sports, but also recreational sport. So uh, bars are the ones in all researches, they come the highest, uh, the highest percentage of people is eating bars, also those who are not really athletes, uh, then there are some shakers which can replace uh, one meal per day. Then uh, drinks which can be uh, more energy drinks like uh, carbohydrate drinks or more electrolyte uh, uh, drinks. And uh, different gels which can also, you can see them, uh, the uh, cyclists are using them uh, and maybe marathon runners. So th this is very um, common use of sport supplements. If we take a look at sport bars, which is fastest growing area of food industry, sport bars and sport drinks, uh, they provide energy as well as other uh, essential nutrients and they are quite tasty, yes? Uh, their comp composition may vary between two different uh, kinds of bars. So the first one uh, you see on the picture, a total energy fruit bar, it's higher in uh, carbohydrates. It's a quick and high energy source. Uh, we can eat it before or after training or competition. And the other one is protein pl plus bar, which is rich in uh, proteins. Uh, we can eat it as a meal replacement. Um, it has high amount of protein and fiber, uh, but it isn't good energy source. So if we eat it uh, prime before competition, it's not good because proteins have a little bit longer, uh, need a little bit more time to um, dissolve. Okay, then uh, carbohydrates is usually the energy foundation uh, in all bars. For example, cor corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup, uh, fruit juice, brown rice, rice crisps can also change uh, this uh, bar. You, we can also use fruit juice, for example. Uh, fibers means that uh, uh, there is slower and more even absorption of carbohydrates. That means like we would eat a meal with complex carbohydrates and it gives us energy uh, on each 10, 20 minutes that we need. So even uh, uh, absorption, not all at once. Uh, so if we have even absorption of carbohydrates, that means also lower insulin response and we um, uh, do not eat it before or during exercise. But if we have protein component, which is lar largely based on protein isol isolated form uh, from milk and egg whites, that is more also recovery or replacement of um, uh, of a meal. So here down we see uh, if the carbohydrates and proteins are in relation four to one or three to one, that is ideal for recovery. And if there is more than 60% from carbs, it's pre-game meal. But if there is more than 50% pro from protein, 
that means uh, protein synthesis, muscle gain, so later, much, much after uh, training uh, or competition, maybe uh, afternoon, evening, or for recovery. Okay, then other uh, very common uh, thing in, in supplements are sport drinks. Uh, Carbohydrate-containing sport drinks can enhance performance during endurance and intermittent high-intensity exercise. So they also we can split them into two categories. So first is here. Um, so a minute. Uh, here uh, first is electrolyte replacement. So here carbs are low, uh, and it is uh, appropriate during prolonged exercise or during prolonged exercise in uh, heat in warm environment. And uh, the other thing, uh, sport drinks can contain uh, that contain higher carbohydrate formulation. Uh, they are more energy. Uh, they can be uh, absorbed after training or preparation in upcoming event, also for recovery. But if we don't want to use that, uh, we can also drink uh, simple uh, grapefruit. This is very good. So two to three hours before uh, training or competition, we, we eat complex carbohydrates and a little bit of protein, not a lot. And then prior to uh, competition or prior to training, we just drink a little bit of uh, grape uh, juice that is very similar to uh, to this drink that contain higher carbohydrate formulation. Um, carbohydrates usually make up about four to eight percent of fluid or electrolyte replacement. Uh, so less than ten percent of recovery. Uh, loading beverage if exceed eight percent of the solution. If carbohydrates exceed eight percent of the solution. Gastric emptying begins to slow down, uh, and that is preferably for endurance events. So if we have marathon, so distance running, cycling, also soccer, uh, tennis. Uh, tennis is also because it it lasts a uh, long time. Game is long time, and you see the competitors which are eating banana and drinking uh, not just water, probably also some fruit juice. But that is. Um, during exercise, absorption decreases, and they need energy for to stay uh, in good shape, good performance for a long time. So this is preferably for endurance events. Uh, also, with some sport drinks, we can also replace some minerals, especially sodium and chloride, also potassium. That is important in neuromuscular function, so that. Um, Fatigue is delayed, and the the hydration uh, um, that body gets enough also fluids, not just water from uh, the supplement. Also, other minerals like phosphorus, chromium, calcium, magnesium, uh, anti cramps mineral, iron, caffeine, like a little bit of stimulant, also. Uh, this is also important in sport drinks. So research studies in sport drinks are very controversial. Um, if carbohydrate drinks uh, improves performance in events lasting one hour or less, so we should use them for one hour, at least one hour or more, uh, training, competition, whatever, for endurance. And uh, sport drinks benefit to athletes who exercise in the morning after overnight fast, because overnight we don't eat, we don't, our sugar is lower. Uh, low is also liver glycogen. So if we drink in the, if we train in the morning, sport drinks are very appropriate to use. Uh, sport drinks also helps uh, to maintain glucose levels and improve performance. Uh, but in short duration, uh, performance advantages are not apparent. More in more longer events, uh, uh, at least uh, 0.7 grams per kilogram extends endurance performance. 
Ingestion of carbohydrates should be done uh, around 15 to 20 minutes interval throughout exercise. Uh, solid or in fluid, but solid is very rare. Um, so not there is not a lot of athletes who would take solid carbohydrates in the middle of the training, but that's why our sport drinks so uh, popular because we don't feel the heavy stomach and we can train in that uh, capacity and intensity on. Okay, now I have uh, also other um, supplements which I will uh, count by alph alphabetical order. So it, it's not, no, nothing is better and the, the last one is uh, the worst. No, I will just count them in alphabetical order because I want to stay neutral here. Um, you have to decide what is, uh, what would you use, uh, or if you would use some of these supplements? So first, uh, here is arginine, ornithine, and lysine. They they are in combination, used in combination or separately, and they are referred to as natural growth hormone because uh, they are leading to greater muscle development. Also, again, some research uh, is not uh, proving that, so it's still not very um, uh, decided if this is uh, the influence of these three uh, amino acids is uh, good for greater muscle development. Uh, but they increase the level of growth hormone in circulation, that is true, so arginine is essential during periods of growth, it's needed for production of creatine, and ornithine is non-essential amino acid, which is not found in proteins, but is important for nitrogen removal, and also important for efficiency of intestinal absorption. So when uh, amino acid is uh, divided to, to absorb, nitrogen is a product which is, with, uh, is, which is um, uh, which we put out of the body with our urine. So uh, ornithine is very important in this nitrogen removal. Uh, lysine is also essential amino acid and all in combination they have, uh, they are supposed to have this effect to uh, build up the muscle um, mass. But more researchers are showing that more in the people which are injured or ill, or even ill, for example, burned per patients, not, it's not the same with weightlifters, because weightlifters have training which is, um, which is, which gives them also, uh, um, testosterone response. So these, uh, amino acids are not enough to get even more testosterone response. That's why there is no changes with weightlifters. Okay, uh, the other supplement is bicarbonate loading, which can be uh, probably important for uh, table tennis players because uh, uh, it, it is a chemical buffer found primarily in extracellular fluid and maintains acid-base balance by buffering hydrogen ions produced by working muscle. So it, it improves anaerobic performance and performance of intense endurance events. So intense endurance means, uh, for example, running uh, 1500 meters or 4 800 meters, may, maybe speed skating, etc. Uh, but lo they have to be longer than one minute, longer than one minute, uh, perhaps for finale of uh, your uh, game. Optimal do is a dose of 300 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. It improves performance, which lasts longer than a minute, we said already that, and improves performance only with repetitive exercise boots, not in one boot, not in one repetition, but it has to have some um, higher in intensity and repetitive uh, boots. Um, so low intensity aerobic exercise doesn't uh, benefit from bicarbonate loading. Boron is another 
supplement. Uh, it's a mineral, essential trace mineral, involved in bone mineral metabolism, uh, steroid hormone metabolism, and membrane functions. So it's very important also in, um, in adolescence, in growing up. It is found in non-citrus fruits, uh, leafy vegetables, nuts, and legumes. And uh, there is one research which showed that 48 days of use increased estrogen and testosterone in menopausal women, uh, improves also muscle growth and strength, but not in athletes. So in athletes, there was uh, no F effect. Uh, these studies showed no effect in uh, athletes. Also, boron is used to help uh, improve bone mineral density. So in osteoporosis patients, it's very common use of this uh, supplement. Then we have uh, BCAA, so branched chain amino acids. I'm sure you know about them. Uh, probably a lot of athletes use them for recovery, for uh, quicker recovery. So they are ergogenic. They can provide athletes with extra fuel. That was also a discovery of research. Um, because after intense exercise, protein breakdown remains elevated for several hours and protein synthesis increases. So BCAA can improve muscle recovery because uh, they make quicker. Uh, so when protein synthesis is uh, increased, they make quicker um, building of uh, injured muscle. Uh, 77 to 100 milligrams per kilogram of body mass, uh, 20 minutes before, during, and after exercise, increased BCAA levels. This was one uh, possible regime to increase BCAA levels, but you can also get very complex uh, amino acid formulation from from uh, normal food as uh, eggs and milk also meat also and uh, legumes for example if you are a vegetarian uh, bcaa supplementation may spare muscle protein during prolonged and intense exercise so that you can have your uh, lean uh, body lean muscle mass um, not touched so the, but carbohydrates are here playing also the role because there have to be enough uh, reserve of carbohydrates that body leaves your proteins uh, for recovery, of course. Uh, lower level of muscle soreness was also detected with use of BCAA and faster recovery of muscle pores post exercise. So rapid return from muscle damage that is the most common uh, uh, effect of branch chain amino acids. Uh, then we go to caffeine, which is uh, marked as a stimulant. Um, of course, many people in the world drink coffee and they get 80% of their daily intake uh, of ca caffeine from coffee, but some of us don't drink coffee, so, uh, we can drink tea or eat chocolate. That's, uh, for me, better <laughs> solution. So in average adult, there is three milligrams per kilogram. It should be daily intake. It is not essential for health. Um, caffeine is rapidly absorbed and distrib distributed to tissues, but often uh, is regarded to uh, that increases fat use, not just caffeine, more in combination with other uh, stimulants. I will show you later. Uh, caffeine is supposed to improve cognitive and physical performance, but if you are used to it, so somebody who doesn't drink uh, coffee or, or doesn't use caffeine as a supplement, it would get contra effect, so it won't, uh, first time, of course, it won't be uh, improving physical performance. Uh, caffeine is also increases the time to exhaustion during submaximal exercise boost, lasting 30 to 60 minutes, uh, spares muscle glycogen, uh, therefore also prolongs endurance performance. Uh, benefit 
both anaerobic and aerobic performance, but studies still aren't um, very uh, the same in their results if caffeine is really uh, the one who increases fat use. So it's like a, a short term stimulant, for example. Okay, the, I am sure you have a lot of questions. We will uh, answer them later. We will go through a presentation with carnitine, L-carnitine, uh, which is found in high quantity, high quantities of L-carnitine are found in meat. It is carrier protein, so it helps transport long chain fatty acids into mitochondria, where oxidation is uh, the only place where oxidation or fat oxidation is uh, done. So it, it, is, it can be referred also to as a fat burner. Uh, oral ingestion increases muscle carnitine concentration and uh, gradual loss of the body fat stores is noted from L-carnitine. Uh, also improving endurance performance, uh, but uh, mostly important is that increased fat oxidation is uh, reducing muscle glycogen breakdown. So uh, we, we can spare muscle glycogen so that we can have it later when we need it for high intensity action in our sport so that 15, 20 seconds we can get more from uh, this so we can, for example, if we have 400 meters, the last 15, 20 seconds would be uh, on this supplement. So it is postponing fatigue, preventing also lactic acid from increasing so that we don't have soreness, muscle soreness, and it is delayed. Uh, vasodilatation is another thing that uh, L-carnitine is doing. Uh, so oxygen supply to injured tissue is better. Uh, and is also it also can be used in recovery on this in this way, okay? So L-carnitine is probably uh, the thing you know, and also we can drink it not just like this. I think there are some um, tablets, capsules. We can also have some solution in uh, sport drinks of L-carnitine. Don't mix it with creatine. Creatine, uh, because it's a different thing. So, uh, creatine is nitrogen containing molecule produced in liver, kidneys, and pancreas. It is also found in meat, poultry, and fish. So, vegetarians could have a problem here. Um, synthesized is about one to two grams per day. Uh, in strength athletes, uh, it's higher because of the greater muscle mass also. And 95% of all creatine in the body is in the muscle. What is interesting is that um, fast switched uh, fibers, uh, muscles, have 30% more of creatine than slow fibers. Um, that's why it's also difference in uh, metabolism and also in performance of anaerobic and aerobic sports. Uh, and creatine is also part of phosphate creatine, which is part of ATP, so energized molecules in our muscles. Uh, this is en uh, creatine phosphate is energy reserve for first few seconds of high intensity exercise, so it prolongs that uh, reserve. Uh, now here are different regimes in blue, uh, which uh, studies has shown us. So 20 grams per day, four po portions of five grams, different times of day, five to seven days. Uh, that meant 20% of uh, creatine increase. So uh, you get increased in energy reserve, uh, fuel is better, training and your performance can be better. Uh, and if you take two grams per day, that maintains creatine concentration for 35 days. So it can be some kind of tournament or uh, some kind of um, bigger competitive event, or maybe just physical preparations, uh, and uh, it maintains your uh, creatine concentration, so your muscle will be ready for next high-intensity 
uh, boost. Uh, very important, I think, it's uh, the last one, adding carbohydrates uh, to your, uh, to your uh, natural, general food diet. Uh, it means greater release of insulin, and that insulin uh, means that uh, it increases tissue uptake of creatine. So it's like a better absorption of creatine in muscle that it gets into energy process. Um, even six grams per five days uh, studies show that elicits improvement in repeated power performance, repeated power performance, not just anaerobic work, uh, but it's not shown to improve endurance performance. So it's more for uh, anaerobic events or high intensity 30 seconds uh, to one minute events. Increase in total body mass and lean body mass uh, was noted also with creatine and corresponding decrease in percentage of body fat. That is, of course, what is now first, I think it's more um, uh, increasing in total body mass and lean body mass than the other way around. Also, increase of water re retention uh, because of increased protein synthesis, so we don't lose uh, extra intracellular uh, fluid. Okay, then there is another mineral, um, chromium, which is also very important for increasing protein synthesis and also muscle mass, so it can be also muscle builder. Um, we can find chromium in brewer's yeast, cheese, broccoli, wheat germ, nuts, liver, apples with skin on, asparagus, mushrooms, egg yolks. So um, in many food, um, chromium uh, actions insulin. So it stimulates the glucose and amino acid uptake of muscle cells. So that's why we can call it. Um, muscle builder improves of also strength and power, uh, but there again, again, different researches, uh, excessive chromium use can also inhibit zinc and iron absorption. So it, it is very important to have harmony between all these uh, minerals, of, uh, macro and micronutrients, which we were talking in our last session. Um, and uh, to be very um, precautious with use of uh, supplements. Coenzyme Q10 uh, is antioxidant uh, together with vitamin C, vitamin E. Uh, it's very uh, good um, uh, antioxidant, which minimizes free radical damage to skeletal muscle and also reducing muscle fatigue, inflammation, and soreness. So found, it's found in meats, peanuts, soybean oil, and is integral component of mitochondria. So uh, plays important role in oxidative phosphorylation. That means that it also uh, um, enhances uh, the oxidation of fat also. It's used to treat cardiovascular diseases and uh, it's, uh, it is ergogenic aid for endurance performances. Of course, research find, findings are that, um, that coenzyme Q10 or other uh, antioxidants do not directly improve performance, but uh, uh, they are good for some, some adaptations and maybe later on for uh, recovery. Uh, adverse effects, so if we take uh, more C vitamin, uh, we can have, and coenzyme Q10, we can have diarrhea, nausea, abdominal cramps, um, or of course also uh, hemorrhagic effects with vitamin E intakes, but that is more than 150 or uh, 2000 milligrams per day. Uh, that is difficult because if we have intense exercise, it's all uh, used uh, in uh, during the training. Um, 
DHEA is a steroid hormone that can be converted into testosterone and estradiol. Benefits are uh, that it can build up the adrenal gland that is straightening the immune system, uh, that is slowing our uh, aging, so natural changing in the body that comes with the age. Also, DHEA is providing more energy, improving moods. It's always, it's um, uh, often it's used for depression, for treating depression. Uh, and uh, DHEA is also building up bone and muscle strength. There are all, again, different researchers who aren't proving all of that, but these are some of the roles of DHEA. Um, no evidence was shown of increases in strength, aerobic capacity, lean body mass, or testosterone levels in men, in athletes, uh, but in uh, patients with different kinds of problems, there was, uh, they were changing. Safety is also not well studied, uh, but no safety concerns were reported for up to uh, 150 milligrams per day for six to 12 weeks. That was safe, um, safe amount of DHEA. And uh, we can have some side effects over several months. Uh, it can raise testosterone levels in women, uh, which can cause acne and growth of facial hair, also some masculine, uh, masculine uh, forms of face are reported in using uh, in women using DHEA. Ephedrine is uh, another uh, stimulant. It's also medication in some uh, some illness. But ephedra is a plant from China, Pakistan, also some parts of India. It is uh, structurally related to catecholamine. It is being used as a central stimulant to treat depression and sleep disorders. So in combination with uh, caffeine, it increases um, power output and also it increases uh, fat uh, to reducing fat, so fat oxidation, and is recognized in many um, markets as anti-obesity drug. But it can be also dangerous because it, incre it in uh, increases heart rate and cardiac contraction. So um, in high intensity exercise, uh, the heart can go really fast and it can be dangerous. Higher is also energy expenditure and fat oxidation, we said that, and suppresses appetite and food intake. So ephedrine also suppresses appetite. Uh, that, that's why is, is it is called also an anti-obesity drug. Side effects are agitation, so very uh, nervous uh, kind of movement, insomnia, headache, tremor, dizziness, constipation also constipation, um, but many times it is used with uh, ca caffeine, ephedrine, and aspirin. Uh, it is really, we should say, a recre recreative fitness drug because they are selling it under the table for all people who want to lose their weight very rapidly, but it's very dangerous, more dangerous than if we had uh, doping in uh, high-level sports because that is controlled and uh, measured. This is not measured and you even don't know where they are getting it from. So it is not so um, undangerous. Glutamine is uh, another supplement. It's amino acid, most abundant in muscle and plasma. It is non-essential, but is very abundant there. Involved in metabolism and energy production, uh, it is important for transporting nitrogen between tissues. So uh, in adult weightlifters, there was no effect on muscle performance using glutamine. There was no uh, effect on body composition or muscle protein degradation but it may help with recovery 
uh, of muscle strength and reduce muscle soreness after exercise. So we can use it as a, as a recovery supplement. Um, no safety concerns were reported when we took 45 grams per day for six weeks and safe use is up to 0.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. Uh, by many patients with serious conditions, for example, infections, in the intestinal diseases, and also burns. Uh, but for athletes, again, for weightlifters, there were no differences. And side effects are not known. So for recovery, maybe also glutamine, if there is uh, a lot of fatigue and if strength is poor. Glycerol is an important constituent of cell membrane. Uh, we ingest it from uh, dietary fats. Uh, lipolysis breaks down the three uh, glycerides and glycerol and fatty acids, so we can get it by uh, food with fat. Uh, ergogenic is from two reasons. First one is that uh, necessary that is necessary resource for glucose production during prolonged exercise. So if we have, for example, marathon runners and uh, we have to provide glucose to the body uh, constantly because it's very long time uh, lasting activity. So uh, glycerol is very good for that glucose production during prolonged exercise and also su supplementary glycerol is distributed evenly throughout body fluid uh, that provide uh, hydrating uh, especially in warmer environments so uh, if you are training under heat stress for example in some warm countries uh, that that glycerol is enhancing uh, endurance performance Or we train twice per day and in very hot conditions, summertime probably. It's also good to take, uh, to eat a little bit more fat. Yes. Uh, hydroxy citric acid is found in tropical plants and also promotes fat oxidation. Usually is marked, uh, marketed as weight loss supplement alone or in combination with others. Uh, what is important here is that it releases um, or uh, makes more availability of serotonin uh, in the brain. That means uh, better mood and also uh, appetite, uh, appetite suppression, uh, similar like ephedrine. Uh, Studies on mice support weight loss and better endurance performance, but studies on humans uh, didn't uh, support that fact. So, we can ask ourselves if that is then, uh, it has meaning to eat uh, all those supplements, or there is maybe one uh, we should use. Beta hydros hydroxy beta methyl butyrate, it's a metabolite of essential amino acid leucine. Uh, body synthesizes a uh, very small amount uh, of leucine per day from dietary uh, catabolism. Food rich with uh, HBM is red meats, asparagus, cauliflower, catfish, grapefruit. Um, uh, HMB is preventing or reducing muscle damage, uh, also su uh, suppresses protein degradation associated with intensive physical effort. So after some intensive physical activity, it can be used uh, for recovery because it's reducing muscle damage. Uh, studies are again divided. Um, first, there was one research where they were using uh, two groups. Uh, first was using uh, zero grams per day. The other was using three grams per day, two to three hours weightlifting per six days uh, per week, seven weeks, and they discovered just higher fat-free mass. 
uh, nothing else. So performance was the same, but uh, fat free mass was higher in uh, people which were eating three grams uh, HMB per day. So not all studies are for uh, different supplements. Inosine uh, is also non-essential nutrient. It is structural component of ATP. Uh, blood levels of inosine are increased by exercise and also by ingestion of certain foods, meats, beer, spinach. Uh, inosine evokes significant improvements in motor function and visceral organ control uh, of ne neurologic injuries. But uh, for athletes, also studies are divided. So it can increase ATP stores. It can improve training quality, competitive performance, also endurance performance. It can stimulate insulin release to enhance glucose delivery. So it can be in high intensity um, exercise. You can still have power a little bit longer. Um, also augments cardiac contractility. So uh, our pulse frequency is higher and acts as a vasodilating agent. So uh, muscles get food and oxygen quicker than uh, on the other uh, or other way around without it. Iron, I was uh, including iron too, because in literature there is not enough of this mineral as a supplement, but uh, I come from dance and we had, uh, this year we had research and mostly dancers have really uh, low uh, D vitamin and iron values. So I included it. Maybe you have also some anemic uh, women uh, athlete who needs iron because iron is quickly uh, lost, but it takes a long time to improve iron values. Iron increases oxygen uptake, reduces heart rate, decreases lactate con concentrations during exercise, and uh, uh, it treats anemia, of course. Uh, women are losing more blood with their periods, so it is very necessary. And also um, for menop pre-menopausal women is also very important. If there is... Uh, mm, too much of iron can there can be some side effects, but uh, if we are active, I think usually it's not uh, that is not the problem. Uh, so eight milligrams per day for healthy men and postmenopausal women, and 18 milligrams per day for healthy premenopausal women was uh, the safe was the safest way to. Uh, use that supplement. Nitric oxide, it's a powerful messenger molecule in the body uh, formed from L-arginine uh, in the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels. Here you can see on the picture uh, with uh, nitric oxide and without it. So uh, how much percentage we have and that's our blood vessels look li looks like. Uh, so nitric oxide diffuses freely across membranes, uh, acts as a powerful vasodilator to increase blood flow to muscles and also oxygen and other um, transporting agents. Also formed from reducing nitrite and uh, nitrite, so we can get it from uh, common food as the green leafy vegetables, lettuce, spinach, celery, and also from beetroot that is very good for, uh, not just for nitric oxide, also for iron uh, supplementation. Uh, it can modulate skeletal muscle function uh, through regulation of blood flow, contractility, uh, also glucose and calcium homeostasis and mitochondrial respiration. So uh, it is uh, also very important in exercise tolerance 
for uh, for prolonged exercise efficiency. Phosphate, uh, phosphate loading, it means uh, how much grams amount of phosphate before strain and straining or competition we have. Phosphate is a component of high energy compounds as ATP and creatine phosphate, which we mentioned earlier. It may increase ATP synthesis and improve oxygen extraction in muscle cells. Some studies also showed improvement in maxima, maximum um, oxygen uptake and also anaerobic thresholds and endurance performance uh, also in decreased lactate concentration at submaximal workload. So phosphate is very important uh, mineral in our body, which is used all the time in every action, in every exercise, in every training and competition. And this is the the one uh, safe alternative to ephedra, uh, sinephrine, uh, sinephrine, if you want, uh, extract from the bitter or sour orange, which is uh, included in weight loss products, but also acts as a stimulant uh, because it increases basal metabolic rate. That, that's why we also call it a uh, weight loss product. Um, so when subjects were fed with 100 milligrams of p sinophrine plus plus uh, 100 milligrams of caffeine, so in combination, uh, that meant increase in mean power and velocity of squat performance. This was one research I found about uh, sinophrine, but I don't know any athlete who would use uh, this kind of supplement. Okay, the most common and well-known proteins um, which are uh, derived from milk protein as a part of cheese making process are whey and casein, uh, most popular protein supplements and they are sold in powder format and they're I think also mostly uh, sold out. Whey protein is acid soluble, digested very quickly is faster acting protein because it reaches bloodstream more quickly and elevates blood amino acid levels higher than casein. But casein, so it's slower, but stays in bloodstream much longer than whey. That's why uh, it's optima, uh, optimal way to do it is, is to use it both. Um, so whey supplement induces rise in protein synthesis at rest and casein has a modest effect on protein synthesis, almost not, but instead of that inhibits protein breakdown. So that's why it's very good to use them uh, both. Uh, these are some regimes. Uh, so 30 grams of whey protein provided in a sequence of 13 small meals every 20 minutes per day. So 13 small meals every 20 minutes was superior for muscle anabolism compared to a single meal of whey or casein. It's the same with uh, proteins from food. So we should uh, eat food with, uh, rich with proteins in very small, small meals during all day. Uh, that is the best way to, to, uh, to endorse muscle anabolism. Um, is, it appears that a post-workout whey protein shake should be followed by a protein-rich meal consumed shortly after the initial whey supplementation. So uh, after training whey proteins, which are concentrated, and then also re rich protein meal uh, in maybe smaller uh, meals divided into uh, many smaller meals, and the last regime is also 20 grams one hour before and immediately after exercise. So casein before because it's lower. Um, uh, no, casein before bed because um, when we are sleeping, uh, we have long lasting effect and muscle anabolism can go on during the first part of the night better than whey. Whey is better shortly after the um the training session okay now 
Um, now we can ask ourselves what are supplements that you should use in table tennis. This is not my uh, decision. I was just thinking about how many uh, different supplements there is on the market and what would be the most um, and the, the, the higher use in, in table tennis. So we have some supplements which are stimulants, some supplements which are which endorse power, strength, and muscle mass. Some of them are for weight loss. Some of them are for recovery and extra fuel. But the most of them are for improving performance. Um, it is very combined um, effect. Uh, let's take a look first you should have a very good diet with all necessary macro and micronutrients and you should be very high uh, level athlete to use uh, other supplements uh, so for power and strength maybe proteins would be good supplement for energy and fuel carbohydrates uh, and sport drinks or also bars for recovery, uh, I would recommend BCAA, especially for young uh, males who are in the uh, adolescence uh, growth environment and they need a lot of proteins for testosterone uh, anabolism. So they are using a lot of proteins which they eat. So maybe for them, for recovery, uh, complex amino acids would be a solution, good solution that the body leaves uh, a body protein for uh, growth, for muscle mass, for uh, improving performance also. For training and performance, there are bars, drink, also bicarbonate loading is, uh, it can be uh, maybe a good way, but I, I would say this uh, high level competitions because it improves uh, anaerobic or intense endurance events longer than one minute so you should take a look how much of time uh, takes one final round but before final round we have a lot of um, pre uh, semi-finals quarter finals so we need a lot of other energy also um, that's it from me. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to uh, your questions. First of all, Peter, thank you very much uh, for this comprehensive lecture and we all know how difficult it is to really, you know, uh, compress all this information, you know, into one hour of lecture, I would say. Yes, so I'm sorry. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for this. And uh, yeah, let's start with uh, the question and answer part of the webinar. And uh, I would like to kick it off with a prior webinar question, Petra. It's from Juan Sanchez. And he yes. would like to what you recommend for vegetarian table tennis players in terms of supplements? Yes. Uh... That is a good question. Uh, first, I will say before supplements, vegetarians should eat first that uh, in general food, they should have a lot of legumes, legumes, so bean, uh, brown bean, uh, rice, also um, that kind of food which has also a protein basis, and they should uh, combine different legumes of different colors because. Each uh, legume has um, only one or two uh, am amino acids combined, so you have to use them more to get more complex uh, amino acid, which has then high biological value and goes into the muscle as quickly as, for example, uh, amino acids from uh, eggs. Uh, but for now, for supplements, um, I would use uh, some protein supplements. That is the best way 
to get some uh, different kinds of amino acids. So I would say BCAA, so complex amino acids, or some uh, glutamine, uh, also maybe inosine, which is um, uh, improving endurance performance maybe. So different kinds of this acid, uh, um, amino acids combination. It is, uh, you know, these supplements are also very individually um, um, prescribed, I think. Uh, trainers have a lot, uh, not enough knowledge, all of trainers don't have enough knowledge to say that for all their uh, competitors, one kind of supplement is enough or two supplements and for all. It doesn't work that way. So you have to um, watch the athlete and use one supplement if, and if the effects are, are good and uh, if his performance is improving, then probably this is the good regime for, for this uh, athlete. So for other people, there should be different regimes of every day. So you can be also vegetarian and eat um, uh, fish and animal product. That's, that's okay. Or you can be vegan. That's different also. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Peter. And uh, I would like to pass now the mic to Massimo for the next question. Yeah. yeah, well, first of all, uh, great presentation. I mean, this was an unbelievable, a great guidance for all our attendees, uh, players, coaches, uh, parents, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the stakeholders, you know, um, orbiting around the, 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 the athletes. So extremely helpful from my point of view, and uh, I hope uh, our attendees uh, find the same. Um, so, um, congratulations, uh, Petra, for your uh, great presentation, super comprehensive. Thank you. Um, my simple question is that, uh, you know, players uh, traveling a lot uh, and uh, they, they put so much uh, stuff inside their uh, suitcase. Uh, what, what kind of supplement uh, um, must be in the suitcase when they are about to, to travel? Or something that really, really helped them? Okay, uh, first of all, if you don't want to use too much supplements and you, you uh, trust your uh, diet, uh, your general diet, I would say that you take uh, maybe some um, shake which, which is a um, combination of carbohydrates and proteins and which can uh, replace the meal. That is the most important thing that athletes don't get hungry because when he gets hungry, it's already uh, muscle, uh, muscle is, yes, body all, takes muscle in the second. Weaker, so because weaker, he, he the muscle, muscle gets weaker, yes. Yes, yes, because he doesn't have any fat and also carb, carb reserve is very important. So. It, uh, he should have some sugar, so uh, uh, not complex uh, hydrate, but uh, also uh, some kind of bar, for example, uh, energy okay. bar, energy bar. Um, but for those who want to take supplements, uh, I would recommend uh, also uh, Protein or carbohydrate supplementation. That means no, not for, uh, not for, not too much for muscle gain and not too much for weight loss. That should be general, uh, uh, nutrition. So I would just say have some bars with you, some drinks and substitutional uh, meal in uh, form of steak. And now if an athlete is very uh, low weighted, so it doesn't have enough uh, muscle mass or it's young, then uh, the percentage of carbs should be higher. If the um, athlete is uh, already um, developed and it, it has enough muscle mass, 
then it's just good to replace uh, it with the meal which has half or less than half hydrates and more proteins for example this is uh, my suggestion but uh, yeah. you have to always think in front so where where will i be how long will the competition take uh, so what do i have to uh, okay keep keep, it, keep, in, keep in mind uh, whatever will come in next uh, next uh, days uh, traveling uh, competition or training and so on so know what uh, you are going to face in order to get ready with your uh, nutritional uh, uh, diet and uh, uh, the supplement in case uh, yeah we know that yes. the players traveling a lot maybe they don't like uh, food uh, in that place oh i don't like this and then so normally they they fill up the the the, the suitcase with uh, with their and worst with some junk food so we yes. really recommend not to take junk food <laughs> in their, in well, their well if uh, if intensity of trainings is very high then uh, ten percent of junk food can be there. Ten okay. percent of junk only, food can be there. Only ten yeah. percent, please. <laughs> yeah. Ten, twenty, maybe the most twenty. But uh, for example, also fruit juice can be uh, also supplement here because we have water and we have fruit juice, which is rich in carbohydrates and it's also fluid and it also yeah. can be as a partial food meal which is on one hour yeah okay so you know that we are table tennis people so i return the ball to uh, my colleague dominic dominic the ball is yours thank you very much massimo and uh, yeah i have another question for you Petra. Yes. And uh, you mentioned it already a little bit um, the long lasting tournament days and what to think about when when having a long lasting tournament day which can mean that uh, one match follows the other or just short breaks uh, between the matches uh, so what to avoid when taking the nutritional supplements that it doesn't have a negative effect mm -hmm. okay so if i understood you well you have a long lasting tournament which is going on the whole day and you are interested in what kind of food and supplement would you take not to be contra effective yes, yes? okay yes. uh so very important are the things that i was uh, on uh, last webinar what we were saying uh, carbohydrate loading so before the competition, in week before the competition, three days before, you can start carbohydrate loading so that you uh, take a uh, much more percentage of hydrates than you, you are used to. Uh, and you get in the morning of the, of the game, you, you have this carbohydrate loading. So your reserves of carbohydrate are super uh, loaded over the top that is one thing that will uh, give you really really good performance during all day because you were doing that three days prior to competition and on that day you have to in the morning you you have a rich breakfast also with the hydrates with uh, maybe uh, oatmeal and uh, fruits and uh, a lot of water or some fruit juice like that and then uh, if the competition is lasting the whole day you should replace or eat much more hydrates than proteins because if you eat proteins then uh, you will have longer digestion and your body will slow down it will slow down so hydrates are the most uh, wanted on the day of competition and if you have some pause between the competition for two or three hours, then maybe you can take, uh, then you can uh, drink shake with uh, proteins also, because you get uh, nutritional, uh, nutritionally satisfied. You uh, you have you have regeneration for before, but after two three hours again, uh, hydrates. 
So do not drink, I don't know, something that gives you muscle mass and uh, the protein synthesis. No way. <laughs> you have to uh, take more, uh, something more with hydrates or maybe complex amino acids to be prepared um, for optimal, optimum uh, performance. Uh, this bi bicarbonate loading would be also good, uh, I was telling you at the beginning of the... And again, sports drinks for electrolytes if you are in warm environment, but with hydrates between the game. So uh, contra-effective would be just too much of proteins or some uh, weight loss product also. Thank you very much, Peter. And I pass now again the ball to Massimo. Yeah, well, checking some questions uh, uh, on the question. And, well, I have so many questions, but uh, we are already uh, 3 uh, 16. <laughs> yes. Interesting topics. Uh, we, I, I really have so many questions. So maybe uh, we have to go for the, the third episode with, uh, with, uh, with Petra. But one question from Katya Mifsud. Uh, hi, when is it recommended to take L-carnitine and what is the dosage? Uh, L-carnitine is for improving endurance performance, for postponing fatigue. So if we take a look at our dosage, I never uh, enjoy eating any of the supplements, so I, I will take a look for the dosage. Uh, L-carnitine is also very popular in women because uh, they think that they will lose a lot of weight through L-carnitine, but it is uh, commonly it is um, uh, used in drinks in very small percentage. That is not enough of L-carnitine to get those effects. So uh, it is uh, um, improving oxidation of fats, of course, because it uh, helps to transport that long fatty acids into mitochondria. But uh, I don't know how much of this use can be. It, it says, study says one to two gram uh, per day, it is normal to maintain this situation. I will take a look. Just a minute. It is uh -huh. always related with the with the body weight. Uh, yes, but not so much because uh, because it can three grams. For example. Uh, in one study, subjects took either L-carnitine supplements 3 grams per day for 3 weeks or placebo effect. And uh, these 3 grams per day for 3 weeks delayed muscle soreness. There were no other uh, results. Uh, okay. Then, so... It's not uh, vasodilatation is better, so the the oxygen is fa is moving fast into mitochondria where fat is metabolized, but that is a lot of products uh, does that, so um, it is postpo postponing the 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 fatigue. So three grams per day for three weeks. That is safe version to answer uh, that one. Big rounds. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Petra. I hope Katya, uh, Petra, um, answer to your question. I think we have one more, and we can conclude. Dominic, uh, we are very much ahead uh, with uh, our uh, regular uh, time for the webinar. So back to you, Dominic. Thanks, Max. And uh, yeah, the last question for you today, Petra, from our side. Yeah. Um, Juan Pablo Barra would like to know uh, what about the age? So could a teenager, so under 18, complement his training with nutritional supplements, in your opinion? Uh, again, age, if it, age is here important. Under 18, under 18. Under 18, yes. Okay, good question. <laughs> 
Well, um, for me, uh, my opinion, my personal opinion is that uh, I would, as a trainer or in high sport level, I would uh, give my athletes really uh, first good program for nutrition. Then I would see if there is another problem with some of them so that somebody is not developing, okay, that is uh, that uh, he or she is uh, uh, tired all the time. Then I would think about supplement. I have, uh, my son is a football player in first league and uh, I had really problems with his growing up because he was very um, thin. He had enough lean body mass, but he, for his age, he was really uh, not developing enough quickly. So uh, when there is a soccer team, you know, it's really different if you have 60 or 70 kilos. So it makes a really big difference. And we tried uh, to give him supplement. Uh, first, um, firstly, uh, complex amino acids. And a lot of uh, nutrition, not only each three hours. He was eating firstly on two hours, then he was eating on one hour. But all of them can't do that. So each hour you have to eat. It's difficult. It's difficult to, uh, to eat all this. So we also gave him supplement with uh, a hydrate and protein combination, but more, much more on hydrate because he was, he has to have uh, uh, energy supply, energy reserve, but protein was just for uh, regeneration uh, purposes. So I would say like that, don't give them supplements if you, if the uh, if you have still reserves on uh, normal nutrition, but if there are really problems that you see, uh, then you should check up the blood, check out the weight, uh, uh, his moods, uh, swinging moods are probably a uh, uh, sign that some mineral can be uh, the problem. So then, yes, then I am also for that supplement because you know supplements are not doping they are just a concentrated uh, food which we don't get enough for our from our normal uh, nutrition but i'm always 100 percent for normal nutrition and firstly of course it should be uh, ideal before i change it to one supplement or two the most thank you very much it is a little bit neutral answer. I know it's not uh, it's not uh, black or white. It's a little bit gray area. <laughs> so I will leave the, I will leave the decision to that uh, person who asked me that. But uh, my opinion is I said it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And a very short note from my side before going to the thank you and closing words. And when it comes to the highest level in sports, uh, then you have to try to find solutions to be the 1% better than your opponent. And if we talk about the highest level, then almost everybody of the athlete has excellent technical, tactical and physical skills. So there are just a few other fields like the sports nutrition in which you can search for this 1%. And that's also the background why we invited Petra and uh, to bring you this topic closer, you know. So besides, it doesn't only refer to the professional athlete, but also to the semi-professional and the recreational ones. And a short last date from Saura et al. from 2019, in fact, 40 to 70% of all the athletes use sports supplements without even analyzing if their use is really necessary. Mm -hmm. So, Petra, in the name of the entire ITTF HPD team, I want to thank you for your great and interesting lecture and for your efforts and your cooperation. It's really appreciated and we also enjoyed your second webinar in our ITTF HPD webinar series related to nutrition. Furthermore, we also want to thank you a lot for taking the time to be here today a little bit longer as expected and sharing your experiences regarding the nutritional supplements.
Voilà, do you do? Thank you to you all, to your attention, and uh, hopefully you will think about uh, every aspect of your nutrition and it better. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Peter. And I also want to uh, like to thank uh, a lot also to our audience for attending and we hope our 43 ITDF HPD table tennis at your fingertips webinar was very interesting for you. And I'm looking forward to announce the next webinar, which will be held next week on Wednesday, the 31 March at 5 p.m. Central European Summertime. We will talk with Matilda Eckholm from Sweden and Susi Liucea from Austria about their dual careers. Stay tuned for our future activities and don't forget to sign up for next Wednesday to hear what these two successful ladies have to share with us. That's all from my side for today. Stay safe and healthy, and I kindly ask my dear colleague Massimo for his closing words. Thank you, thank you, Dominic. Again, I, I join uh, uh, Dominic in thanking uh, very much uh, Petra for the time, for the presentation. Extremely uh, comprehensive, uh, really, I really liked it. I, I, I'm sure that uh, attendees also liked the, the, all the contents. Uh, so informative, so important from my point of view. So thank you very much again, Petra. Uh, thank you, Dominic. So the, we will uh, meet again next uh, week uh, for the dual career with the two our uh, again friends. Uh, uh, actually, they both are left-hander, right, Dominic, uh, Matilda Eckholm and uh, and uh, Liu Jia. So it's uh, been interesting to to hear from them next week, Wednesday, 5 uh, p.m. in uh, uh, Central European uh, time. So thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.